Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am here with Melissa Purcell, who is a business agent with IOTC488. How are you doing today, Melissa? I'm good. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Uh, I know that you weren't able to make it with us uh, live, so thank you for facilitating this uh, pre-record, as we call it. Thanks for making it happen for me. No worries. No worries. So uh, as I've mentioned before, uh, a lot of our audience may not even be familiar with some of the unions or IOTC 488 in specific. Uh, so why don't you start off with just an overview of what the union does? Sure. So IOTC is the International Association of Theatrical and Stage Employees. We, uh, as an international union uh, that covers Canada and uh, the U.S., uh, we are all of the entertainment trade. So that's anything from stagecraft, um, uh, Broadway, uh, projectionists, ticket takers, um, convention halls, um, this sort of work as well as film. So Local 488 is a motion picture uh, mechanics local. Uh, and we have been around probably 28 or 29 years in the Pacific Northwest and we cover Oregon, Washington, parts of Montana and Northern Idaho. So we are a mixed uh, local of all of the technicians that are used in film other than camera, uh, directors, and production designers. We cover everybody else. Very cool. Now you're uh, one of two business agents in the Northwest. What exactly do you do as a business agent? Sure. So we have two business agents because we have a pretty large jurisdiction. One is uh, our Southern business agent. He's based out of Portland. I'm in the Northern Business Agent position uh, based out of Seattle. And uh, as business agents, we are essentially responsible in uh, finding work for our members and uh, doing any sort of uh, work that helps facilitate that possibility. We also uphold the contracts. Uh, most of uh, all of our film and commercial contracts are national contracts. So jobs will come to town that might already be with signatory companies. So we need to uphold those contracts, understand them, make sure we have stewards on the job. Stewards are people on each job that help communicate between production and the crew. If there's any issues, they can get back to their business agents about the contract or you know how often they're breaking for meals, that sort of thing. Um, so we just do the data. Go ahead. Uh, no, you go ahead. I cut you off. So we, as business agents, we just take care of the day-to-day -day operations of the union, making sure that we have work for our members and mitigating any issues once that work is there. So how long have you been with IOTC? Uh, I've been a member of this local probably 26, 27 years. I'm a prop master by trade, um, but I have been business agent for just over a year and a half of a three-year term. Oh, wow. So it's pretty much of a new role for you. It is. I was a member of the executive board about 20 years ago uh, for a probably two year stint, but I was traveling and on location too often and, uh, you know, stepped down because I was gone too much. So just real quick, in a nutshell, for people who are starting to either come out of school or get into the industry, what's the most important thing about considering joining the union? Well, you know, once you join the union, I think the aim to join the union is really because you've reached a certain level of professionalism. So um, you've gained a certain number of um, days on jobs in your one specific class or craft. You've gone beyond being a production assistant. You've decided that you want to be a grip or you want to be a gaffer or you are a set dresser uh, or a costumer. Um, and you want to work your way up to a department head. So you join the union um, and uh, along, of course, with joining any sort of union is it comes with benefits. So the idea is that you have health care, you have pension, uh, you also have certain standards uh, that your union um, is fighting for and has protections in place so that you can't be misclassified, for instance, and being paid as a 1099 or invoice, uh, you're all on payroll. Uh, which means you're covered by unemployment and social security. Um, it also uh, means that you have a certain wage minimum. 
that all contracts uphold. Um, so you're not having to um, start from ground zero all the time. That's the benefit of joining a union. Very cool. And if somebody wants to join the union, where should we send them? Uh, you could reach, we have a, a website, um, uh, iatse488.org. Um, and there is information in there about how to join. For our local, each local is different. For our local, you need 30 days uh, in a 12 month period in the same craft um, and a resume, et cetera. Uh, but the information is on our website. Very cool. Thank you. Uh, so let's dive into the heat of the matter. Uh, I know IATSE was part of this, um, this task force assembled by Washington Filmworks, the statewide film safety task force, for lack of better right. terms. Uh, what role did you guys play in this? You know, early on, uh, Amy Lillard, executive director over at Filmworks, um, and I were speaking and uh, realizing that in order for our industry to reopen in our state, the governor's office was going to start asking industries to put forth their own guidelines. We had just seen the construction trades open up uh, and both um, labor unions and employers worked together, which was pretty unusual for the construction trades, um, to come up with what those safety protocols would be. Uh, so Amy called and uh, we talked quite a bit. Um, there was lots of protocols and recommendations coming out, but it was all speculative. Production companies out of LA, studios, um, there was uh, unions, film unions out of the UK that had some really great uh, protocols. So it basically was a matter of putting together all these documentations uh, that uh, had come from over the internet that Washington Filmworks put together um, and then put forth to a greater statewide uh, task force as it was. So I helped her you know, with some names and with some recommendations in order to get a good working group that was diverse uh, and statewide reaching. Very cool. So what's the current state of the union? Where are we at right now? So, uh, you know, this working group, as well as the larger overview uh, task force, uh, probably has been meeting off and on since, kind of lose track in COVID time, maybe <laughs> late April, mid-April. Um, we, after a few different drafts, uh, the safety protocols for our state went forth to the governor's office from Filmworks probably a little over two weeks ago. So the governor's office has had them. Uh, we added to that uh, probably a week ago, the DGA, the IATC, the Teamsters, and uh, SAG-AFTRA did a joint release of the white paper. So this was a re recommendation from all the entertainment unions and film um, about sort of initial safety protocols. Uh, those were added, I think, to the governor's office through Filmworks, and we are awaiting the governor's approval. Um, I believe that Amy is in touch with them on a pretty regular basis, if not daily, close to it. And uh, they're asking all the right questions of her, making sure that labor was involved, making sure that the entire state was reached out to, um, and we are pushing them uh, as quickly and as hard as we can to uh, get them to reopen our industry, but in a safe way. Very cool. Well, we're going to be talking to Amy shortly, so I'm sure she'll get us the up to minute update. Yes, yes absolutely. Uh, is there any last thing that you want to let our uh, audience know before we let you go? You know, uh, just a couple things. The end of last week, we got additional joint uh, document from, again, the same uh, entertainment unions. And this is uh, something they're referring to as the Safe Way Forward document. Mm -hmm. um, this is probably the standards that will be used for um, negotiating with uh, studios and signatory companies as a um, sort of in these COVID times, this is what you will need to follow. Um, we hope that that becomes a uh, industry standard, whether you're union or non-union, but we are still working through how that would look because it's very test heavy. So in order to protect actors who can't wear masks, it's gonna be pretty test dependent, but not all states or areas have full capacity for testing anytime you want, anyone you want. So what I'm understanding might be happening for jobs that are large enough is they may be bringing their testers with them or getting their own supplies. Um, so this is all sort of a work in progress, 
this is what our national union has said as well, is that everything's pretty fluid right now. We're setting up what our standards are, but that doesn't mean that once people start working it, that it doesn't keep evolving essentially. Um, so because testing is uh, still not at full capacity, that's something that still needs to be figured out. And we hope to reopen as soon as possible. And we don't know if it's gonna depend on testing or not. So um, I think the main thing to make sure that everybody certainly in our state understands or anybody that comes here to film and really anywhere in our industry is that we want our film commissioners and our unions to know that you're here filming mostly because we want to make sure you have our state's protocols in place and that you are working safe, that you aren't afraid to reach out and ask questions of the unions or the film commissioners so that we know you're out there and we can help to make sure your cast and your crews are safe. Awesome. Well, on behalf of the film community, thank you, Melissa, for being one of the leaders that push us forward back into work in a thank safe way. <laughs> thank you. Thanks All for having right. me on. We're crossing our fingers. It's going to happen soon. Soon. That's right. And I'm crossing my toes. So thank you. Have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks, Ben.